Hi, and welcome back to our Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in today's session, we're going to be looking at the tornado chart. The tornado chart was developed by Microsoft. And basically, the idea of the tornado chart is it gives you the ability to look at a bunch of categorical data, and it shows it on almost like a bar chart that's listing the categorical values vertically. So you'll see the categorical values here in my example on the screenshot listed vertically, where you see all the 16 to 17 year olds, 18 to 19 year olds, 20 to 24 on that vertical list going from top to bottom. It also allows you to have each distinct category value in a separate bar, left or right parts, which is what you're seeing here. I have a left and a right part of it, female and males showing on the tornado chart in the screenshot here. If there's a legend value, which we'll take a look at here in a moment, the legend value can only have two distinct values, meaning you can't have three possible values show up on the tornado chart as it splits that bar here. So keep that in mind. If I had uh, anything else here where I had uh, married, single, divorce, I couldn't have all three of those show up here on a single tornado chart. It only allows two distinct values to appear on the legend. Well, I have a couple different options, a couple different ways I want to show you how to use the tornado chart. Let's go ahead and walk through how to go find it, download it, and use it. All right, so first things first, we should go to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, you can find the tornado chart here. Once you scroll down towards the bottom, at least that's where it's at right now, you'll be able to select the tornado chart here and go ahead and download the visuals so that we can use it through our demonstration here. You're more than welcome to also download the sample that they're using uh, to see how to use it. But we're going to walk you through a couple different examples on how to use it in this course. So let's go over to the Power BI desktop and actually walk through a couple different methods of using it. Now, the first method that we're going to use is going to be to pull in our file. So we need to start by pulling in our data file, which is going to be looking at uh, pay, annual pay by men and women. And that way we can kind of see the difference in pay for men and women for different job titles. And so we're going to be looking at this data in two different formats. The first format is going to be the standard way that it's given to us. And then we're going to actually modify it and show you how you can also work with it in a different way in the same type of chart, the tornado chart. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and import the data. We'll do that by going up to the Get Data section and selecting Excel. We're then going to be pulling in the Pay by Job Title Workbook. Again, you can find this file below in the video and you can use it for this example. So I'll go ahead and select that pay by job title and hit open. It will then prompt us in the navigator pane to choose the spreadsheet. There's only one in here for this example. So I'll select men versus women. You can see the type of data that we're looking at here. So pay for men, pay for women. And I'm going to go ahead and hit load to bring this into Power BI. All right, now to actually use the tornado chart, we do of course need to import it. It is a custom visual, so I will go hit the ellipses right here. Tell it I want to import that tornado chart. Go find the custom visual, which I will find underneath the uh, custom visual section for me. You likely have downloaded it somewhere else. But I'm going to select the tornado chart and hit open. And that will now appear in my custom visuals pane, or really my visuals pane. I see my custom visual here for the tornado chart. All right, so I'll select the tornado chart, lay that into about half of the screen here. I'll make it take up about half the room because we're going to actually use it a second time here next to it. And we'll start by bringing in some of the fields that we have inside of our field list. So I'm going to start by selecting the job field. And you'll notice no data appears yet because we haven't selected any measures. So I'm going to also bring in the measure for men, which now appears here kind of as a standard bar chart. And then I'll also select women. And that's a measure as well, which shows us a comparison between both men and women pay for each of the different categories that we see here. All right, now the first thing you'll likely notice is it says zero million next to every single one of these. So there's a little bit of formatting that we'll likely wanna do. We're gonna talk more about the formatting in a moment, but let me go ahead and fix this so we can actually see what the values are. To fix this little issue here of it showing zero million all the way down is we can go underneath the format paintbrush, go underneath the data label section here, and we can, uh, first of all, you can, of course, increase the data label size, but we want to change the display units, which is the property that you see right here. And rather than showing as auto, I'm change it to none, which will actually show the values in, in full. Or I can change it to thousands, which is some way that we would probably oftentimes talk about our pay is in, you know, 64K or 52K. So I'm going to use it in thousands for the display units. Now, one other thing that you might want to do here as well is actually modify the sort order of this. Right now, it's sorting it by the category that we have here, which is the name of the job. But uh, you may want to sort this so that you can see, let's say, for example, the men with the highest pay at the top or the, the jobs that men get paid the most at the top. Unfortunately, there is no sort order change here. If you go underneath more options, there is no ability here to change the sort order. So if you want to change the sort order to something other than just the default here that's sorting by the jobs or by the category, 
then you'll need to do one thing. You'll actually need to change your data model a bit. And so, for example, what I might have to do here is I'm going to have to actually create a new field that uses a, a little bit of a DAX function. And what that DAX function will do is it will create a new column for me that will return back the sort order. Okay, and so what I'm going to do to show you how to do this one is I'm going to flip over to the data view primarily because I want you to see the value that's returned here. So I'm going to go to the data view inside of the Power BI desktop. And we're going to create a brand new calculated column. To create a new calculated column, there's more than one way to do this, but you can do it by going up to the modeling ribbon and selecting new column. And so I'm going to call this column my sort order column because I'm going to use this to change the sort order of the jobs list. All right, so I'll call it sort order, and I'm going to use a function called rank x. And what rank, rank x will allow me to do is bring back a number of where were my highest paying jobs to lowest paying jobs, and it'll give me a number one to however many jobs I have. All right, so I'm going to tell it that it's coming from my table that's called men versus women. Okay, and then I'm going to tell it that the field that I want to rank on is going to be the men measurement that I have here. So I have a measure, an implicit measure called men. I'm going to go ahead and select that as the unit to do the ordering by. Uh, you'll note here it does by default order in descending order, which is actually what I want it to do. If you want it to order in ascending order, there are other types of expressions you can pass in. Uh, that you can see here, for example, where you see it says order here, you could pass in ascending or descending. Ties is what is it going to do to break ties. And then values is really if you have some kind of unique sort order you want to uh, deal with or uniqueness to your ordering, you can work with it there. In my case, it's already doing it the way I want. It's doing it descending, so I don't need to add anything to it. All right. Great. So we've gotten that taken care of. We've created this new sort order column. Now we actually want to tell the sort order column to change the order of my jobs and so that it'll now sort by the uh, highest paying jobs for men. So if I go back over to the report, you can see currently it's not doing that sort order for me and that's because we still need to change the job property or the job column to change its sort order. So to do that, you'll select the job column here, go up to the modeling ribbon up at the very top of my report view and you can see there is a option here called sort by column and if you select that, you can tell it that you want to change the sort order for the job column, which currently sorts by job, to sort by the sort order column that we just created instead. So I'll select sort order. You can see then it does affect the sort order, and you can scroll through, and you can see that indeed it does carry that sort order all the way down. If you continue to scroll, you'll see that. So it does appear to be working correctly there. All right, so that's your kind of workaround because there is no sort order property whenever you click the ellipses like you have with some other visuals. All right, now before we move on to my second example I want to show you, I do want to also show you some of the other things you can do in the format section in the format paintbrush. So let's work our way over to the format paintbrush over here. We do need to have that visual selected and then choose the format paintbrush. Uh, and let's highlight a few of the things that you'll see here. You'll notice that there's under the group section, you can turn on or turn off the groups. That's basically the labels that you see on the left-hand side. You can turn those off if you don't want to see them. And then you can just do a little tool tip to actually see what the job title is. So if you don't want to see the name, you can turn it off. You can also change the order of it. Maybe black will make it a little bit easier to read. So you can change that instead of the, the gray that it was set to. And then you can see also, in addition to the group labels that you can adjust, that you have the data labels you can adjust. So if you want, you can turn off the data labels altogether. So that turns them off and you don't see them appear here anymore at all. You can also, by expanding data labels, increase the text size. So if you wanted to increase the text size a bit, you can do that here, make it a little easier to read. You can change the decimal places, change the display units, which we already did just a few moments ago. You can also change the color. If you don't want it to be white, you can make it black instead. That's a little bit more difficult to read, so I would leave that as white. Yeah, it's a little easier. Uh, you can also change, in addition to the labels here, you can come into the x-axis right here, the x-axis. And you can adjust the units that you see here. You can basically adjust how much space are each of these bars taking up. So, for example, right now, the top one here, the chief executives, the CEOs, it's sending the 117K all the way to take up the full length of this section here. But if you wanted this to appear as more of like a 100% chart, you can do that as well by changing the men. Let's say if I change the men to something like 100,000. You'll notice when I change it to 100,000, that's 10,000. Let's add one more zero to that. When you change it to 100,000, any of them that have 100,000 as their value or higher, they show up as showing up as basically 100% of that bar value there. So that's what you're kind of getting by changing the x-axis is you can adjust how that looks here. But if you don't want to use that at all, it'll basically just show the complete value as it appears in the data set. All right, next, that's the x-axis. Next, after that, is the data colors. 
here's where you can actually change the colors that are appearing in the chart. So for example, if I wanted men to show up as, let's say, a blue type color here and women to show up as a red type color, you can adjust that in here and it appears that way as soon as you make the change. So you can change the hid colors as well. The other type of properties that you'll see here have to do with adding a border around it. You guys have seen borders before. Uh, you can change the position and the size of the chart. You can also lock the aspect ratio, maybe add a background color to it if you want, or you can change how the title appears here. So maybe I want to move the title to the center and increase it a little bit. You can do something like that here as well. As soon as I take, make it a little bit too large, that changes where I don't see the data labels anymore. So let me readjust that a little bit. There we go. All right, so very interesting. So we've gotten that taken care of. Now, I want to show you one other way you can use the tornado chart as well. To show you this example, what I'd like you to do with me is to start by going back over to the home ribbon. And I'd like you to go to where it says edit queries. Go ahead and click on the top portion of that button. Click edit queries again. And that's going to take you and launch you into the query editor. We, we kind of skipped this portion before when we told it just to load the data in. I'd like you to make some adjustments here. So here's what I'd like you to do. Go ahead and right click on the men versus women query that we have. And you're going to duplicate it. So you're going to select duplicate here. You can rename this query if you want. I'm just going to leave it as men versus women too for the purposes of what we're doing here. Uh, but what I will do is I'll remove a couple of the columns. I'm going to remove the men median and the women median weekly in earnings. I'm going to remove those two columns by selecting them and right clicking and selecting remove columns here. Then what I'd like to do just to show you a different way to work with this data and maybe a different way that you might receive your data. I'm going to take the men and women fields and I'm going to unpivot them. So basically I'm going to have a gender column and an income column. And then that way I will be able to show you another way to work with this data, which might be more similar to how you receive your data than what you're seeing in this example. So I'm going to select men and women. I'll multi-select those, right click and do an unpivot columns. You can now see that I have a new column in here or really a, a changed column that has the gender in it. So I'll rename this one gender here. I'll also rename this one to the right of it. I'll call this one income. Okay. So now you can see it does increase the number of rows that I have. The, the job titles appear in here more than once, but I also have the gender column here split out. So I don't have a column that has gender in, uh, male income and female income. I have a gender column and an income column. So we've kind of changed it, but this might be how you receive your data. So I want to show you how you can use the tornado chart when your data looks more like this. And so I'll hit close and apply here. We now have two different data sets here. You can see in the field list, I have men versus women and men versus women too. And so what I'd like to do with this new one is I'm going to bring in a tornado chart again. So I'm going to select somewhere in the background here, create another tornado chart and make it take up about the other half the side of the screen here. And from this new one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the men, that's right, the job first. Let's select job, select this as a tornado chart like so, select gender and income. And you'll notice the chart looks very similar to what the other one looked like when we first started. Of course, we changed things like the uh, data labels to show in thousands as opposed to the auto setting here. But you can see this looks very similar to what we started with on the left hand side. The only difference is the fields and how the fields came into us. Because the fields came into us differently, you'll notice a comparison between this section right here with our new chart and that same section with our old chart. Notice in our old chart, we weren't using the legend section at all. But in the new chart, we're using the legend section that's allowing us to split based on the gender, men versus women, that we had in the gender column. Now, what's important about the difference between the two of these is that inside the gender column here, you can only have two distinct unique values here. If you have more than just the two, the men and women, say, for example, this was marital status and you had a few extra things in there like mar married, single, and maybe divorce was one of the attributes values you had then as soon as you hit three values, it, you're not able to use it inside the uh, tornado chart. So you have to have only two distinct unique values that are placed in the legend section to make this work. And with gender, we, we do have that in this case at least. So that's something to be aware of here when you have the data stored in this way, that it's going to change how you use the chart. Again, here we had no legend because we had two measures for men and women. And then inside the new version of this, we have the legend has the gender column which already has two distinct values in it. And then we had one single value, which was our measure of income. So I wanted to show you those two different ways. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a, a little bit of an interesting chart. It just depends on how your data is stored, as, as determines how you're going to use it. And you also saw how you might want to change some of the custom formatting under the paintbrush, uh, the format paintbrush. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and look forward to talking with you about our next Power BI custom visual.